Locating the source of an underhood noise can be a challenge, but what if we could see the noise? Would that help? Let's find out on today's edition of The Trainer. How many of you have one of these in your toolbox or really went old school and used that long screwdriver that you held up to your ear while you prodded around looking for that abnormal noise? Isolating the culprit is already a challenge considering how noisy the underhood environment is. And add to that the fact that we tend to lose some of our hearing capability as we grow older. So if we want to find a way around that, what can we do? Well. Why don't we experiment with seeing the noise? Now to try this experiment for yourself, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need your scope, your mechanic's stethoscope, and a pressure sensor like this one made by First Look. Now what makes this pressure sensor unique is that it's a piezoelectric pressure sensor. It contains a piezoelectric crystal. Well, what does that mean? Piezo is the Greek word for press or squeeze. And a piezoelectric crystal is a crystal that will create a small electrical charge in direct proportion to the pressure that's being applied to it. And that's a signal that we can see on our scope. Okay, let's go ahead and set up the scope. Of course, so you can see we're using a Snap-on Verus four-channel scope. I only need two of the channels for my little experiment. So we'll set that up first. We'll go ahead and pick, uh, oh, let's set up channel number one. And I'm going to set this up based on the 2020 rule for scope use. If you really don't know what kind of a signal you're going to get, you, it's hard to go wrong with the 2020 rule. And what that means is the first part of the 20, that's the voltage range that we want to measure. So let's select 20 volts for the range. And that means that uh, because it's a 12 volt system on the car, that's going to cover just about anything I might connect to. So it should be okay there. So we'll go ahead and display channel one. Now let's back up a second. We'll put the other half of the 2020 rule into effect. And that's the time we have on our screen. The 20 uh, stands for 20 milliseconds per division. 10 divisions, 200 milliseconds total, which you already have selected here. Why that particular number? Well, 200 milliseconds uh, for an engine at idle should cover the 720 degree cycle and then some. You with me? So that's why we have that. We'll see at least one complete cycle of all four, four cylinders occurring within that frame. All right, now, back to trace one, I just want to point out that again, why are we using this? Well, the first channel, that's going to be my frame of reference. Again, I got enough time to see the whole 720 degree uh, cycle of the engine. Uh, so I, would need, I need some frame of reference of just where I'm at in that 720 degrees. So I'm actually going to deploy this and, and uh, track an ignition pattern on this channel. And that's going to be my known tree in the middle of the forest. That's my known waypoint, my known reference. Okay, so that's why we're using this channel. I want to get my sound input on the second channel. Now, on this one, since we're using the pressure sensor, I don't really care about an actual voltage reading. In fact, I can't get one because the piezoelectric crystal reacts to changes. It doesn't physically measure the amount of pressure or, or voltage applied to it. So I'm not worried about that. And because I'm not worried about that, I want to keep it in a nice center, center of the screen, not worry about any DC component to the signal. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick AC coupling. Of course, we're going to display the channel. And now as far as the voltage range, generally I like to start off with around one volt range. If I'm uh, not going to be something I can see on the screen, I can always adjust that later. Remember, that, that's your zoom feature, if you will. Adjusting the voltage up or down will allow you to zoom in or out on the signal. Now, just a quick note here. This is going to be a little unusual from the trainers you've seen me do in the past. This is not a proven and practiced technique. This is something that we're kind of playing with to see just how well it might work. So let's go ahead and make the tool that we'll need to actually see if we can see what we're hearing. We're going to take our mechanic stethoscope and all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the part that I would normally attach to my ears and set that off to the side. We want to make sure that that rod is nice and snug and it's not loose. 
Then we're going to take a short piece of rubber hose, attach to one end, and then attach the other to our sensor. Now it's important to keep that rubber hose fairly short. The longer it is, the more it can dampen the signal that's trying to travel up it to that sensor, and that's going to affect the amplitude of any signal that you're trying to use the tool on. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and try out our new technique, see if it does help us isolate these noise problems. The first thing I want to call to your attention and remind you of is that we do have two channels on the scope deployed. The number one channel, in this case the gold channel, that is my reference channel. I have that tied to the igniter event on the number one coil. And because I have my time base set to that 2020 rule, you can see I'm very easily covering the entire 720 degree cycle. So I know where I'm at in, in the forest relative to the individual trees, right? So that's a good thing to start with. The next thing we want to do is take our tool and let's just see what happens when we apply it to a known source of noise. And first one that comes to my mind is one of the fuel injectors. So we'll just go ahead and lay this up against the fuel injector connector and see what kind of a pattern we get. Now notice right at the bat we can see that one is a lot hashier than the others. But we also have this rolling hill backdrop, don't we? Now I wonder what that could be caused by. Well we can see that it corresponds with the 720 degree cycle, doesn't it? There are four humps contained within that 720 degree event. Does that mean that I'm looking at the combustion noise going on, or is it something else? I'm leaning towards something else, and here's the first reason why. I can feel the vibration in the tool, and if there's a vibration in the tool, there's going to be a sound wave generated as it passes through that diaphragm as the part of the mechanic stethoscope. So what if we move to a little quieter place on the motor and see what happens to the pattern? We'll pick something no relatively quiet, and we see that a lot of the hash is gone, but the peaks and valleys remain. Well, what if we move now to an area where it's isolated more from the vibration from the engine? Let's just go to the frame side of the engine mount and see what happens. Still a little there, but a lot quieter, isn't it? So there's, this is really kind of a vibration-related issue. It's not a sound-related issue. So I want to make sure I don't take that into account when I'm doing my diagnostics. All right, so let's go back to the fuel injectors. I want to try to go in the same place in each one, right there at the clip for the connector on number one. Again, as I pointed out, you can see where that hash is the most apparent. Now we follow the firing order. One, well if it's number three injector, should move it over one to the right, right? So let's see if that happens. We'll move over to number three. And sure enough, it moved with it. What's the next one in line? Number four. It's there. It's not as, not as apparent, but I'm not as good on the connectors as I'd like to be. Let's see if I can get a little better. And then finally, number two. Let's see where that lines up. So the injectors are showing up in firing order, aren't they? And that's something that's interesting to note. As I move the probe closer to the injector that I was listening to, I could see where it was on the, on the scope screen because it had the most amplitude, right? The pattern was the largest, expanded the most in that area. Now could I use that to isolate the cause of a noise of, say I'm looking for a bad bearing on one of the accessory dry pulleys? Well, I think so because as I get closer to the source of the noise, I should see the amplitude grow. So we'll keep that in mind. Now speaking of pulleys, let's try that out. I'm just going to move over here to the alternator now. And I'm going to place my probe very close, as close as I can get to the bearing uh, area on the alternator case. And we can see there too, we still have that wavy pattern. Not a lot of frequency, so there's not a lot of noise coming from this component. That's a good indication. But a common mistake I see young techs make is they use their mechanic stethoscope and they place it at the end of the shaft of the alternator. Let's see what happens if we do that.
That's very noisy indeed, isn't it? But is that a result of a bad bearing? No, it's that rotating mass and it's spinning against the side of my stethoscope probe that's creating the vibration in the tool that we're seeing on the screen. We can also take a look at, say, the uh, water pump. We'll see if I can squeeze that in there without touching anything. Okay, we're on the water pump. That's relatively quiet. But if I move just a little bit and I come into contact with the belt, you can see what happens to the sound. So what are we learning from this? We have to make sure that we have our probe properly placed and it's not on, on anything that's moving and it doesn't come into contact with anything that's moving. We also take into account the vibration of the engine itself. But is this a, pos a possible a method that can help us locate the source of that noise, noise? I think so. What do you guys think? We were able to see the noise, weren't we? And for older techs, it just might be the ticket needed to isolate the cause of that engine noise complaint that your customers presented you with. I hope you took away some things from today's edition of The Trainer, and I hope you'll share with any tidbits that you might have from your own experimentations using this and similar methods. Thanks for watching.